Welcome to Drinking Bros, presented by BlackRifleCoffee.com. Hi. Hi. I did three for Dave. No, you always do three. I know. You I always like do three. three. I like three. Yeah, you like three. Yeah. We got three of us on the show today. There's a good three. Josh Wolf is here. What's going on, Finally. guys? Finally. Finally. I've been asking him for three years. Jesus it's Christ. It's been a minute. It's been That's since it. that boot camp. Eight. Four years. Four years. Was that four years ago? Four yep. years, Jan Taylor's been asking him for you to come. He's I, been asking for four fucking years. And a Morgan, first of all, I like don't Morgan, feel like you've so really long. been asking for four straight years. By the way, that was a good time, Morgan Freeman. It, that's I how long it's been. Always check. That Morgan Freeman needed to narrate your fucking appearance on the show. <laughs> that's how long it's been. Wow, you uh, do you do you intentionally do a Morgan Freeman? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So, Freeman Fridays. Freeman Fridays. Uh, I'll do a fucked up video on Fridays, usually yeah. with Morgan Freeman. Or sometimes late at night on Instagram, I'll, I'll make a really fucked up post of, of Morgan Freeman. Yeah. Uh, it's called Morgan Freeman Knows You're High. So it'll be there. be like, I know you're stroking her titties right now. <laughs> but she's asleep and you're wondering if you can put it in. And it's just like, and it's like, don't do it. Don't do it. Morgan do you Freeman do knows any you're high. Other voices? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like a hundred. Really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I think we're going to try this week to, to get him. In the Joker makeup because he does McConaughey as Joker. M- McConaughey's Joker. I like McConaughey Jesus. I do. I, I forget like that who one came up with that the other day. Yeah, right? Jesus like, seems like a natural fit. Well, yeah, yeah, exactly. Because where it's Jesus, just like you got to you got to do the look at the. Seems like a real yeah. natural fit. <laughs> hey man, how about you take the nails out of my hands? Yeah. You know? <laughs> I can't. I can't put a glass of uh, three fingers of tequila in this hand. Yeah. But you ease up on the nails, man. Yeah. Um, like so, we were, we're talking about shooting that. Yeah. But, McConaughey yeah. Jesus is pretty good. McConaughey Jesus is sweet. Yeah. I also think McConaughey barista would be good oh, because wow. he feels like a dude who would take that job super seriously <laughs> do you know and what i mean he would yeah. give you advice like like are you sure you want that and the foam <laughs> picture he would always draw of himself yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know? It's, always, it's always his face <laughs> it's always his face in different movies like all right all right all right and then he hands you, oh fuck all right <laughs> but especially because the orders are so long and complicated he would drag it out too yeah that's a triple tall sugar-free yeah. vanilla <laughs> skim milk Soy uh, latte. Sure? You don't ask you want a some wheat grass. Yeah. Best stone. The be, who plays the best stoner in a movie? Uh, uh, a better. I uh, maybe better question. Oof. The be, Who who has played the best stoner to you in a movie ever? I know for me, I go back and forth between McConaughey and Brad Pitt in True Romance. To sure. Me, Brad Pitt in True Romance takes a cake because there are a couple lines in there. Yeah. Like don't you don't you condescend me, man. Yeah, is one that I just Rory Cochran in Days and Confused. Good one. Um, just because that whole speech of of being on the dollar bill. Yep, yep, yep. Um, like that whole thing. Like, uh, so he's he's got to be one A, and then I, I, dude, Brad Pitt, True Romance is one B for me. He where it's like, all right. Yeah. Cool. McConaughey seems stone anyway, so I kind of take him out of the convo oh, altogether. Interesting. Because he's not really acting. No. And 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 why is every part that he's doing southern? No matter what, it's southern. Like it's got a southern accent to it. Because I, I don't think he can lose his. You no, know, he can't. Yeah, yeah. But like in Wolf of Wall Street, you know, it's like, hey man, you're a New York City Wall Street broker, and he's just like, come on, man. Yeah, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but we all just forget. Like we all like he's so cool that we forget. And you're like, ah, fuck it. Yeah, a, yeah. Su- a southern guy probably transferred to New York. Or- that's like um, that's like the uh, that's like the movie Valkyrie with Tom Cruise starts off with a German <laughs> yeah, accent <laughs> and then he has an American accent and then everybody in the German army has a British accent. And you're yeah. like, what the fuck <laughs> is what just ha- happened? Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. with us. <laughs> also. Do you ever see Kevin Costner? I was going to say the OG is Costner and Robin Hood because he, they he didn't give a fuck after no, ten minutes. It, no, ten no, minutes. No, yeah, in, yeah, you yeah. know, ten minutes in, they went back and looked at the dailies <laughs> and they were like, "Let's just have him not do that act yeah. anymore." Should we shoot, reshoot? No, we don't have the money for that. So we'll just people will just forget. <laughs> Prince of Thieves. We're we just, just gonna. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> ten minutes in, he doesn't give a fuck. Ten you know, minutes in, no more accent. You know his his whole thing is going to alter your mind. He's always wanted his dick in a movie on screen. His dick has been cut from eight films. Eight. Huh? Yes. Yeah. Dick and balls have been cut from eight films. Can you name the That's films? That's his dream, yeah. Uh, so Mr. Brooks was one of them, right? I don't know if Where you saw Mr. Where does his dick come out in Mr. Brooks? Hang on. So do you remember there's a creepy, like he's burning shit in a fireplace, yeah. buck naked, and it's but they're going in from behind, and it's like 
you could tell there was some some master shot that was supposed to be there, yeah. but they're coming in between his legs from behind, and it was just like, oh man, that he wanted his dick in that. Like, I, there was no reason for him to be naked, burning shit in that fireplace. Let me ask you something. Yeah, because this brings up a different question. Uh, Robin Hood, by the way, another one. Remember yeah, when, when he's swimming, swimming naked yeah. in the fucking yep. pond? Well, this brings up a completely different question. Dances if you with wolves. want your dick, yeah, in a movie. You've got to be pretty happy with your dick. It's got a hammer. That, that yeah, or or that's just like a, a troll thing that it's like he's like I want frontal nudity. Yeah, yeah, but you know, there's no dude in the world who's got a belly button dick who wants full frontal nudity. Yeah, yeah, no, that's that's a hundred percent true. So he's got to be like flaccid. He's got to be happy with himself. Probably six flaccid. Yeah, got to be eight hard, six flaccid, six flaccid, and, and you got to figure no it, curve. I no think curve. it's a straight, yeah, 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 straight, yeah. straight shooter. Yep. Mm-hmm. And I and I think he, knowing that it gets cold on sets, he's he got to care. Yeah. Yeah. If he did it in that in that pond and yeah, it's gonna in, be cold. Yeah. And wherever the in, fuck in they England. shot that. Yeah. <laughs> I I I mean I'm gonna have to dig deeper. Oh, I hate you, to dig deeper into Kevin Costner's dick. dick. But I'm about <laughs> you know, deep talking. dive into it. I mean those yeah, were deep th- dive. those were four I just gave you. Dances with Wolves too. I mean those were four that I gave you. And there's another four out there where you're like. Oh fuck! Like water, in water world. world, water world. Yeah, I mean, that, I wish he had done it in Untouchables. Oh man, he's just taking his dick out right in front of De Niro. <laughs> <laughs> I just laid it on the desk. Uh, so, yeah, yeah, I got you. We got everything. Team, team. team. You take a bat to this motherfucker. I wish he would have done it. Field of Dreams when he was playing oh, catch with, with his, his kid? with his dad. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that hey, would have been the ultimate power move. How's your dick? How's your dick looking? How's your dick? This is what the whap. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it, it seems right, only right to take this dick out on a field of dreams. Exactly. Yeah. Speaking <laughs> of taking weird animals out. Oh God, <laughs> damn it, dude. If you want to talk, so Costner took his hog out in that movie, right? Yeah. yeah. God, if him and the dad that were both buck naked, I hate to. They were both buck naked, playing, just having a catch boat, both buck naked. Yeah. Because I cried anyways. I I probably would cry even harder with your dick out yeah yeah because it's, that's, that's what we've all wanted to do with our dads but you have a know, nude catch when you, if you masturbate and cry at the same time you know what that's called right no it's called the double puddle is it really well you know how <laughs> yeah the double puddle looks like the we du- have the name of this episode the now double, the, double the double puddle, puddle. Double puddle. because then you can use your tears as lubrication it's really a masterful move yeah it's, you it takes a while to figure out how you're going to cry yes, and jerk off at the same time warm Yep, I can see that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 A little yeah. salty. Yep. Oh, fuck, real, real salty. Yeah. Yeah. And if you're <laughs> yeah. crying when you're masturbating, you got other shit going on. The double puddle. That's what yeah. I'm saying. So it's not easy. Not everyone can do it. But you, if you guys ever end up mastering it, let me know. I uh, haven't been able to figure it out yet. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not. Yeah, we're still working on stale fish. I've only cried on once what? during masturbating. Jerking off stale fish. Yeah, looking at your own asshole. Yeah, it's when you mirror. look at your own ass. What? <laughs> oh yeah. So if you jerk off stale fish, uh, obviously mirrors behind you. You're bent over. You're staring at your own asshole, jerking off to your own asshole. Yeah. And that's right. a fetish online. Okay, just hold on one second. Yep. So I'm looking. Yeah, you, you, I'm yeah, looking yeah. Through my legs. You could, or you could do a bend. Or so you, you can, can look around. A, there it is. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you giving yeah. yourself a Correct. reach around. There it is. But don't you have to spread your? Yeah, well, it depends. It depends, depends on. It depends, depends on how wide really you get up on the counter. Yeah. How wide your asshole is. It's all about your stance. I'm, I'm going to ask you a question. Have you at least... Given it a go? Yes. I've tried it to see if it's possible. Yeah, that's what I mean. I just right? is it possible. I'm a tall gentleman. Yes. That's a, It's a hard ask for you someone gotta like me. you got to kind of go catch your stance. Yeah, because I can't, I can't... I'm not that flexible. Like, I'm a tall drink. You know what yeah. I'm saying? I'm about six, three and a half. I can't go that far no. and then still catch a mirror it's going to have to be something custom. Double mirrors. Yeah, that, that's put into the house by somebody else other than me. And you might need some sort of, you might need to Jimmy Rig some sort of tool that spreads your ass cheeks apart. Yeah. Like some sort of like, you know, like the EMTs have to yeah, spread, yeah, just to, to yeah, spread yeah. people's ribs open, you know, and they just clamp it on there and just. Mm, it's like a little pencil sharpener, yeah, some yeah, type yeah. of handle for it. I'm going to think, yeah, what's it yeah. called again? The dead fish? Stale, stale fish. fish. Jerking off stale fish. Yeah. So if you go stale fish, it's. Why it's, is it called uh, stale fish? I don't know. Think? Uh, skateboarding move, right? Yeah, that's a skateboarding. There's trick. a skateboarding move where yeah. you look at your own asshole. Uh, I think I, I think you you hold the board up by your asshole, right? I think so. Something. Like I'm that. not. A, I'm not a skateboarder. I don't know guy. why they use that, but no, that's what they came up with. I have to tell you, um, between the double butt puddle and the stale fish, I think the double puddle is probably harder to yeah, accomplish. Well, imagine combining all of but them. But I think 
if I did the stale fish, I would naturally double puddle. Do you know what I mean? If I was looking at my sure. own asshole, because yeah. I've seen it before, it's not great. You're like, this is this is awful. This is where I am in my life. I'm looking at my own asshole to jerk off. I think it's going to make me cry. And if you're crying when masturbating, like, again, something else deep is going on. So, like, you'd have to get a call that your grandfather died and you guys were close. And then you just start jacking off, like, you know, because you don't know what else to do. Yeah. Maybe nobody. It's a late phone call. Nobody was up. Yeah. You just broke up with somebody. Like, yeah. I don't know what to feel right now. I can see the, the breakup double puddle yeah. that seems to yeah. make sense to me yeah. yeah yeah oh yeah like that's i think that's the only way you could get there naturally i think so i think so because you probably are still attracted to her yeah but you're also really sad yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> i mean like if you walked in on her getting <laughs> fucked like one last time and you were like oh no man we yeah. had to break up because she was getting fucked but it was but also kind of hot kind of hot and yeah. you were like oh, yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah but oh, that, oh, at that oh, point fuck. if you walk in on her you go for the triple puddle What's, What's a triple? You get in the shower. Oh, you God. Cry. And then you're crying in the yeah. shower while masturbating. I'm going to tell you, I'm not a fan of jerking off in the shower. I'm not a fan of sex in the shower. I don't think that that water is not a lubricant. No, and not only that, try getting your footing. How You're slipping and sliding yes. all over the place. I, you're probably colder. I never have a problem. You need baseball cleats for like like 100%. Yeah. McGregor's tell, like plastic cleats, I, not even metal. No, you, metal yeah, will yeah, kill yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. I, I tell a joke about that on stage about how. It's a whole thing about how sex in the movies, where they have it and how they have it, looks. Yeah. I'm not going to go into my bit. I, I hate doing that shit. Sure, sure, but, sure. But, uh, but yeah, man, sex in the movies, it's like when in, in the most romantic movies, you see two people making out in the rain. Right. Yo, you wore jeans in the rain? The last thing I want to do is Just touch another human rain. being. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yep. Yeah. When you have wet jeans, like... It's everything else besides getting those fucking jeans off your body. A everything, yeah. It is out, it's out the window. Yeah. Wet jeans are about the worst feeling. So, yeah. I, um, but there, I, I agree with you, man. In the shower, it no. just doesn't. I don't. He likes to fuck in the shower. I don't, you do? I don't like to fuck in the shower. Yeah, he loves it. You, you used to, to fuck in the height, shower all the time. Height. Yeah. You just have to find the right uh, yeah, You're fine. I, I, the it, height and lube, because it doesn't go in, no, right? No, and the water is like is more hot like, tubs, ee, ee. no go. Pools, no Ooh, go. Hot tubs get you sick, don't they? Yo, I don't know. Hot tubs, first of all, hot tubs by nature, unless it's your hot tub, right? At your house, I don't know why you're getting into it. I don't know why. <laughs> yeah, yo, because when I see people in a hot tub at a hotel, like my hotel Dude room, stew. Hotel, Dude, what yeah. the stew. fuck are you doing? Yeah, that is nuts, stew, a hundred percent, stew. And look. We've all been in hotel rooms. Do you really trust that the housekeeper Licking is scrubbing out pieces? that tub? No. Uh, none of it, by the no. way. And I fully expect, and same with that, that yeah. top that top cover. Oh, I fully don't touch expect that shit. it's it's like fucking OJ's, you know, house Dude. after the after the whole fucking murder. I know that there's semen, blood, like dog hair, everything you can imagine that somebody's I don't even know taking if I in. I want there. my own hot tub. Dude, no, you don't. No, Dude, no. Do yourself a favor. And film it, but go on the road and go to a hotel room, even the fanciest, swankest one. Yeah. And bring yourself a black light. You're, I did it. First of all, it looked like there had been a crime in the bathroom. In the bathroom, they're up on the, like, up. Right. Like, you would have to throw your semen, yep. like, in Silence of the Lambs. Like, you were celebrating the 4th of July or something. Have you ever, <laughs> you let me, <laughs> so let me ask you this. Have you? Has it ever been so gross that you said, I, I can't mentally get through this, give me another fucking room? 100%. I had that, too. Yeah. Mine was a pile of toenails. Somebody had cl <laughs> clipped all their toenails, and they were around the bed, and I was uh, like... That's uh, a nope. power move by that person. Yeah, yeah but that's I was a, like, nope, yeah. I'm out of here. But how did the maid not catch it? Ready for this? On a couch like this. I'm in Atlanta in a hotel room. And look, I love practical jokes. Sure. I love fucking with people. I don't, I'm also, I grew up with three older brothers. So I don't need to see the joke work. I just need, you know what I mean? Yeah. I, just, I have about six seeds planted in Los Angeles right now. I don't know when they're going to grow, <laughs> but I know they're all going to grow. And I don't think about it. And then I'll get a text. Fuck you. And I'm like, oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Right? So I sat down in Atlanta on a couch like this. And I'm wearing shorts, dude. And I go, oh. And I sit up. And somebody had taken a big a, a toenail from their big toe and jammed it. So half of it was in the couch, but half of it was sticking out. Oh, <laughs> so God. it, 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 it <laughs> poked me in the hamstring. <laughs> and I left it there. I was like, no, that's going to happen to someone else, too. Fuck them. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm not the only one who's falling for this fucking joke. It was, I was disgusted, but I also tipped my hat because I was like, that 
I would have, even I yeah. would have never thought of clipping that toenail and been like, you know what? Boink. Yep. Yeah. But my favorite hotel prank, <laughs> and please do this, my favorite hotel prank <laughs> is just to set the alarm for 3 a.m. Before you leave, set the alarm by the bed for 3 a.m. Nobody checks the alarm. No, yeah. No, I no. never have. You're right. I've never checked it. It, You will wake, and you don't need to know it worked. I mean, right. you know it worked, but you don't need to see it. But the next morning when you wake up, you're going to be like, ha, 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 ha. Oh. that motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, I hope there and was. You a could f- only, you could only hope that room went empty and the person next oh, to you listened yeah. to just like for four fucking hours. Dude, so for me, like whenever, I mean, you guys travel a lot. Yeah, it's so much fun. Just set it right when you leave. Set it for three a.m., four a.m., whatever, it, whatever time you think is the most annoying. Yo, I I travel every weekend, so I do that to somebody. Every, Every weekend, weekend of my life. <laughs> Our co-host, who's who's not here, he's, he's got AIDS in the other room. Um, mm-hmm. close Is that to, where you keep the people with AIDS? Yeah, close to death. Another AIDS room. room. Yeah, the it, AIDS room? It's the yeah. Mercury room. It's the Bohemian Rhapsody room. Um, <laughs> we, don't, we don't like to show it, but we want people to know it's there. Same as yeah. the movie. Yeah. Um, he pulled the ultimate power move. We went to a thrift store to go pick up costumes mm-hmm. about two weeks ago. And I see him buying like 50 sets of like earrings, like shitty cheap earrings, just right? Just grab the whole gambit. Whole thing, put it in the bag, and it was just like, ring me up for these, I'm good. I was like, what the fuck are you doing with these? And he goes, this is exactly what I'm doing. Leaves it in the car. So he's just leaving one earring in his buddy's cars, so that way <gasps> when their wives or and if, or girlfriends like get in there. Like windows open, he yeah. said he went to go, he was he was walking into 7-Eleven, yeah. window open, the dude had walked in in a suit, kid, kid seat in the back, and he just, dink. Dink, popped an earring in. Yo, that Enjoy it. is <laughs> disruptive, to oh, say yeah. the least. Now, we've, we've talked about this before. We talked about going, if, if, if you have a girlfriend or wife or anything, you go, you, you, you kind of sit down somewhere and you listen to somebody that's on a date yeah. as well until you get his name. And then you have her walk up and go, hey, Tom, it's done. You're welcome. I'll never see you again. And just bounce. Bounce. Walk right out. <laughs> Walk right out of there because and just leave. no matter what, you'd never recover from that. Yeah. No, you, that's ruining. You, you and if never you, recover from that. if you put up that. a phone, too, like you're recording it, hey, Tom, it's fucking done. And then, boom, you're out. You know, you just walk away. Nothing. It's done. Cleaned out. Yeah. You don't have to worry anymore. You're welcome. Bounce. You owe me $400. <laughs> <laughs> because no matter what, no matter what, you're like, I don't know. You, you think about you in that situation, you're like, I don't know who that was. Like, yeah. But they knew your name. All you have to do is sit for a yeah, second. How, how the fuck do they know your name then? That is a rough one. Uh, <laughs> the tough one to walk away from. No, no wonder he has AIDS. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. He's gonna die in, in maybe yeah, fifteen yeah, minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah. It's gonna be like an easy E death where it's like, oh, he's in the hospital now, he's dead. Like that's that the, quick. That's how quick he's. Yeah, gone. and you guys are gonna visit him as much as Dre and Cube. Of course, you're well, gonna visit him from outside the room. That one, yeah, yeah hey. that one fun. Hey, yeah, yeah. <laughs> quick pop in. <laughs> yeah, hey man. Hey, I'm just just head in. I don't need Wearing to. Like, I don't need to go in there. Suits. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, those ET suits. I. Have all, have you ever been in a hazmat suit? Oh Absolutely. yeah, I've never been in one. They what sponsor hot? this, so they sponsor one of our. Is movies. it hot? Oh, it's just oh. hot. They sponsor one of plastic. our movies. Yeah, so it's how do you breathe? Just put a garbage bag on, and you is that you what get it is? Point. Yeah. yeah, because what's the? How do you? Is there are there is there like a, a filter that you breathe through? There is a ventilation system, yeah. but it's not good. It's, it's not, not good. great. No, you're you're gonna be you sweat like a like crazy. Like right? like yeah. like Shaq, you know, from the free throw line. Patrick like, Ewing sweat. Yeah, like fourth quarter game seven. Ewing or Shaq. Tough. Ewing, Ewing, I, I think go, too. I go Ewing all the way. Ewing was because like Ewing a, had wristbands, yeah, <laughs> and he was still that sweaty. And you were like, man, where was the rest of it going? Yeah, and you know what else he had that Shaq didn't have? Hair. Yeah, he motherfucker had hair to soak some of that up. Your sweat. Yeah, not for Patrick Ewing. No, he, nobody sweated like that guy. That dude must have had a sweat pores the size of my pee hole. Yeah, you know what I mean, like all over his <laughs> yeah. body, because it was like a a river of sweat was falling out of his face at all at all times did you ever uh, it's one of the reasons i stopped playing pickup basketball i'm like yo this dude sweat there's just too much of it too and, much yeah and and like get in there on d no yeah yeah i'm good no you see the dude with the goggles who's sweating just standing there i know i'm gonna have to guard that He's motherfucker the fucking goggles yeah, yeah. the rec <laughs> the rec specs the guy with the rec, the rec specs, specs who's fucking grunting uh, uh, the uh. guy setting picks i can't i can't play with him if you're setting picks in a pickup game 
you need to go home. Yeah, yeah, you're right you're, all, you're all done with this life. <laughs> you're right, right away. You are clearly not athletic anymore. Time to go home. By the way, crying, jerking off. If I walked in on Patrick Ewing sweating while fucking like my wife, yeah, that would that would make me cry and but jerk not off. Jerk at the off. Same. Well, Just it's Patrick Ewing. Yeah. Up. <laughs> You're pretty excited. Yeah. And I respect that he yeah, I respect that he's there, you know. Like Oh, we have the same with taste in women, yeah, Patrick Ewing. Yeah. <laughs> Still a boyhood idol, you know. Yeah. So, Are you were you a Knicks fan? No, but again, I respect the game game recognizes yeah. game and something like that. Like, you know. Where are you from? Atlanta, Georgia. And diehard you, Hawks fan. Where are you from? Washington State. Yeah. You're diehard. You know what's interesting about Atlanta? Dominique was my my guy. And Bird kid. was my guy. I was from Boston, Boston. Yeah. But you know what I will tell you, and you please tell me why Atlanta. I by the way, I love the city. I really do. We were just there for the Super Bowl. I love the city of Atlanta. Why, in guys, please take your feelings out of this. I know you know this is true. Why are the Atlanta sports fans so? Like, why can't you sell out arenas? Why transplants? Is so, that what most of the city yes, is? Yes. So it's all it's oh, it's, it's Hollywood. Yeah, yeah. It's it's like L.A. So. Everybody we, came from somewhere that. else. What happened was 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 during the uh, the, the the recession, like yeah. late seventies, early eighties, that that type of shit before Ronald Reagan saved the world. Obviously, right? I'm kidding. I have no <laughs> fucking idea. I was I wasn't alive. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna say. <laughs> but yeah. no. Uh, so everybody everybody said Atlanta was the next big city for a booming job market. Mm-hmm. So as a kid, my parents drove there to start jobs like uh we can't get hired and you know they were i think they were working in ohio and they were like man we've everybody's going to atlanta there's all these job opportunities there so everybody kind of transplanted there and then the city exploded Got and then, like jared was saying hollywood came in so recently of, they yeah, well I mean, within the last five like, years no it was more 2008 is when they started really building oh, that's right studios. tyler perry and all those guys and they started so, shooting all the marvel films down there right correct yeah, a lot of them yeah yeah so all of that shit is there they've got 30 percent off they got all those fucking studios and uh boom and so you're you're transplants you're, so it's all transplants you're everywhere. falcons hawks braves i am yeah and are you seattle nothing Nothing. He's not a sports fan. Oh, not a sports fan. No action sports. He likes. Yeah. So he likes like Travis Pastrana and shit like that. Yeah. Did you say Travis Pastrami? Pastrana. Oh yeah. Yeah yeah yeah. Yeah. yeah I don't know who that is. Yeah. No. no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was clear. You guys. The guy said you were talking to yeah. earlier. He's Nitro Circus guy. So like. He's yeah. a what? Nitro Circus. Yeah. With uh, Travis and those guys. So, yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I. He could have been. It could have been anybody. No. Yeah. He was to Jesus. me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See that guy that they burned into the tortilla that looks yeah. like Jesus? <laughs> tortilla Jesus. Tortilla Jesus. Come I on, you know Tortilla you. Jesus, He right? does have some pretty spectacular curls, he that does. dude. Yeah. He, does. I, that's, he that's, could play McConaughey Jesus. That's he God did. given. He, he yeah. said he started growing that hair in a mullet, and he would cut it once Travis won a NASCAR race, and he said that was eight years ago. Yeah, hasn't, hasn't won <laughs> and yet. And he still hasn't, hasn't won. won yet. Yeah. He seems to be embracing it, though. Yeah, I mean, he doesn't seem to hate the... I'm going Summer of Swayze, by the way. So this is this is not real. Um, I mean, it's real hair. Yeah. But the blonde isn't real. I'm doing the whole summer as Bodie from Point Break. So I'm getting a body curl here in a couple weeks coming up. Oh, that's a going great. full body curl. Power like move. That. And are you going to change your dre- the way you dress? Well, I'm he's not- going he's going Bodie up here, and then he's doing the full fulcrum yeah, on his body. Full fulcrum after that. Yeah, so got to go. I got to shave so everything from mustache down. Yeah. Yeah. Are you waxing? No. Uh, nair. Yeah, 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 a lot in there. No, on your I, nutsack? I'm a hairless guy. On your nutsack, you're hairless? No. So that's the only thing. I got a little pitcher's mound and then some, some nutsack hair. Rest of it, almost, almost fucking clean dry. I have to tell you, like, when I hear people talk to me about shaving, we did, I, I talked about this the other night on stage. Someone said something about shaving your balls. And I was like, what would you mean, like, taking a straight? And I found there are guys that take straight razors. Straight razors, yeah. Do they not understand the topography of a nutsack? Like, it's like shaving a brain. You're going to nick that motherfucker a couple of times. Like, you're using a straight razor for a brooch, right? That's for your taint. Yes. Um, Obviously, you got to go spready. But the nutsack, you can't straight raise. You can't. But we had a porn star on the show, and they gave us a a, a tip on how to shave a nutsack. Yeah. You dip it in cold water so your nuts shrivel up. That way, it's a smaller space to shave. And then you go around the whole fucking sack. Why not? And that made sense. And I was like, all right. And, you know. Next go round, I, I gave it a go. I tried that, but mine stuck to a pole. And yeah. yeah. <laughs> I had a worse day. You shave up down there, you go. I trim it up, but I don't yeah. shave my nuts because you know, you know, the first time you nick your nuts, 
you have no idea how much they bleed. No. Like you're like, oh, is this how it ends? Like yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. You put your feet above your heart. Like I gotta call my dad. Like, yeah. Am I about to? You know what I, I mean? Call my dad. <laughs> No, you know what? I had to call my dad. He's the only one that can answer that. My nuts that. are bleeding. My nuts are bleeding. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like that. The first time you nick your nuts as a dude, it's like your forehead. You know, your forehead just bleeds and bleeds yeah. for whatever reason. Your nutsack just never stops. No, would, my dad would be the wrong one to call because he gave himself a vasectomy. He what? Did he really? Gave himself a V-sec? Yeah, he, oh, he had a uh, soldering iron and a pair of scissors. That's not true. No. No, it's not true. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> if you're giving yourself your own V-sec, I mean, that would be yeah. amazing, Listen, wouldn't it? I'm automatically voting for you for president. <laughs> yeah. But I don't care. Like, I'm writing you in. Even that if you're not running. I'm ingenuity. I'm right. <laughs> Elon Musk can't do that yeah, shit. Yeah, no. You clearly have a threshold for pain yeah. that nobody else has. You've done some shit. I'm voting for you for president. That's I trust you to make the right decision. Yes. That's a beautiful V sec you gave yourself. Yeah. You know, like, Did he stitch himself up too? Because that would oof. be with his teeth. Uh, he just used the iron. Oh, you know? yeah. <laughs> At the house? Yeah, just. <laughs> ah, cottered. I'm done. No scarring, just a little dot. I, I have to I have to ask, so do, now that I'm thinking about it, do people have hair on their taint? Yes, absolutely. That's why you got you to shave up. You Who don't have any hair, hair on their taint. You don't have hair in your taint? No. The Everybody. Gaza Strip is just. No. It's a clean walkway. No, 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 no. It, it is a, a blessing. They, they call it a gerbil call catwalk for a reason. <laughs> you call my dad. Wait, call your dad. Hey, wait, thank wait, you. Wait, a gerbil you catwalk serious? for a reason. Yes, absolutely. I thought it was like no, bear. No, I'm just one of the lucky ones. Oh lucky. no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You so it's like a caterpillar. It's like a. Uh, <laughs> it is. It is. <laughs> there's like a caterpillar, a natural caterpillar that goes from your asshole to your nuts. Yeah. At that moment, Josh realized he was gifted. <laughs> He was gifted. I mean, wow, you got to shave it, bro. I don't. There's no hair there. There's I'm no like a way. super I'm like a superhero. My <laughs> That's god. That's like my special yeah. power. The smooth taint? Yeah. Wake up dead Stanley. And you tell him that's the new superhero power. That's that's a gift that every guy wishes he had. Cuz it's hot. I, the I, summers I, are hot. But your taint? You have hair in your taint? Yes, Gerbil Catwalk. Gerbil Catwalk. Everybody's got it. Not this guy. Oh, boy. This guy, his his taint is... Why do you think they call it the swamp? It's slave heat down there. Well, listen, there's no in doubt. The summer. When it gets hot, <laughs> there during the summers, especially here, my yeah. nut sack is stuck to my leg like a fruit roll-up. Sure. There's no doubt about that. But in general, it's not my taint. It's just the... Gener it's the... It's the boys. Yeah. You know what no. I mean? It's just the boys. Now, uh... uh you found a new gift today. I really and did. I want you to appreciate that. I want to tell you something. You know, I met with Stan Lee. Did you really? <laughs> this was one of my favorite meetings Stanley in Hollywood. Story. Yeah. One of my favorite meetings in Hollywood. So I sit in. They they had um him and his partner were looking for like a a, a hangover script, but for superheroes. And this was back when the hangover stuff, everyone was writing a hangover type script. And I was like, man, I'm not interested in doing that, but I have a pitch with Stan Lee. Yeah. I'm gonna take advantage of that and just pitch a different movie. So I go in and um First of all, I'll tell you that. Did you wait? Did you at least fake a pitch for the for nope. the other thing? You didn't. No, nope. that's ballsy. I, I went right in and I said, "I'm you probably are hearing a hundred hangover pitches today. You're not going to hear one from me." <laughs> Solid. Because my thing is, is like I was either going to get it or not. Right. But yeah. I wanted to. I wanted. You don't to have a hangover pitch, then guess yeah. what? Your odds are none, yeah, but zero I, anyway. I wanted to stand out. I wanted to be like, oh yeah, you know what? I, maybe because they probably heard the same fucking story over sure. and over again, right? So I go in, and first of all, I will tell you that Didn't the, Will Smith already do that movie. Yeah, 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 right, yeah, yeah. yeah. The drunk superhero. Yeah, it, Hancock. Yeah. 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 So, um, but I go in. First of all, I will tell you that the guy, Stanley. I don't know what, how, what your relationship was with comic books at all. Were you, did you, were you a comic book guy? I'm not a comic up? book guy. He, he, you Mediocre, love, yeah. but like but into, he's the, into the movie. obviously revered by a lot of people. He's the guy. The, he's the fucking dude. And because, of, you know, a lot of people found solace in superheroes, in that make-believe, in these people who, who, who had faults. Who he invented. Yes, yeah. exactly, like, exactly. Yeah. Oh, I have solace he, against him. He, like, he, motherfucker, this doesn't exist yeah. if he didn't write it. Yeah. <laughs> like, what do you yeah. mean? You're mad at Stan Lee. Shut the fuck up. So I go in. I, I, and I give him the whole, man, you know, when I was a kid, the way my parents got me to start reading was on comic books. All of my friends, when our, pa when our parents wanted us to start reading, they would get us a, and he was like, you know, I hear that a lot. And he was very humble and gracious, so we start to pitch. 
And we're si- almost just like this. You're Stanley. You're his partner. Was he, was he close? Because I'll, I'll get in close. No. <laughs> I'll tell you something else. He would start to fall asleep. And as soon as he started no to fall asleep, way. his partner would laugh, <laughs> even if it wasn't a funny part. <laughs> and instead of slamming the arm on his hand, he would just tap the arm on, on uh, Stan's chair, and Stan would wake up. So this happened. So they knew. Yes, it was yeah. a game they had run. The yeah. dude was over 90. It was an early, you know, he. my theory was, because Gil was like, I'm so sorry. I'm like, hey, listen, man, if you're 90 and your body's like, I'm shutting it down right now for like 30 seconds. That's because the body's like, we need to shut it down for 30 seconds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like we need, basically my, my thinking was his body was recharging constantly. The battery was dying. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So he was constantly recharging every 30 seconds. And so I finally told him, I go, hey, man, don't wake him up anymore. Like, I'll leave the piece of paper. I'll just pitch to you. But, like, let the guy sleep. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, he clearly he needs, needs it. it. <laughs> wants it. <laughs> he needs it. He's like, is he Iron Man right yeah. now? He's got, he's shut My it man down. needs to sleep. But he, they, um, so we did it. We, he basically woke up and went to sleep at his own pace for the rest of the meeting. Pitched it just to his partner, but it was a fucking greatest meeting, man. Because <laughs> the guy, they had clearly been doing that dance for years. For years, yeah. They'd been clearly doing that dance for years. What I loved about Stan was that he still wanted to be involved. Yeah, and he didn't want to insult the people who were sitting in front of him. So I'm sure he was like, "Hey, fucking, yeah. give me a little tap, <laughs> keep me alive, brother, yeah. keep me alive." <laughs> Bring that defib out and just kind of pick it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm up. I'm here. Okay. I'm here. here we go. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you see a lot of weird shit in Hollywood, man. Yeah. Oh fuck. I told. I was telling you earlier. The Trader Joe's. Trader Joe's. We were talking about Trader Joe's. Oh, yeah. God. Yo, man. So this is just. Up. I'm a firm believer that wild animals stay outside. You don't domesticate wild animals. No. There's no fucking reason. There's a reason that they're wild animals. And not only that, most wild animals don't want to be domesticated. And it right. doesn't make you interesting if you have a fucking wild animal. At all! At all <laughs> it yeah. actually makes you a it, fucking it's dick. Like, it's yeah. like, oh, <laughs> you really? You're spending all that yeah. time with that thing that doesn't know how to just relax? You yeah. have an ostrich? Really? What? <laughs> that makes you feel good having a, an animal that would gut you if it had that fucking... Oh, ch- yeah. Ostriches are mean. They, they're they mean. don't like when you jump on them. No, no, they don't like that at all. No. Um. Okay. I walk into Trader Joe's, and in the produce section is a dude, and he looks exactly probably the way you think he looks. <laughs> Wh- wearing a uh, wearing Man bun, a, wearing a head, <laughs> up bun. He had one of those heads. Ah, yeah, yeah, the up bun, the tie, yeah, yeah, the samurai bun. Go. Yeah, yeah, looks really good for the white dude. Very Seagull. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Very Seagull of him. Yes, and he was wearing a baby Bjorn, and he had a baby possum facing forward in the baby Bjorn. Sorry, did you say a possum? Possum. Now, possums a are baby, a possum, a real possum. Maybe the most disgusting animal. Like something yeah. that you would. What's more disgusting? A rat? A sloth? Maybe, but that's sloth. about it. No, like that's the yeah, only. no, no. I think sloths are kind of cute. Yeah, sloths are also. It's like okay, you got that from the jungle, and it's kind of cool. Yeah, and they have a those. Possum they have the wolverine. Is, is a trash pig that hangs out in the gutter. A trash Sleeps pig. Sleeps upside down. Yeah. By the way. Oh, I'm going to tell you another possum story after this. So, <laughs> I love a man so, with a couple good possums. Yeah, possum I got a couple of good possum stories. So um, I was like, hey, man, is that a possum? And he goes, yeah. He was excited that I wanted to talk to him about his possum. He was like, yeah. yeah. And I go, you can't have a fucking possum in the produce section at Trader Joe's. And he goes, well, nobody told me to leave yet. I was like, wait right here. I'm going to be right back. <laughs> Someone's going to come back. Someone's going to come back and we're going to get that fucking yeah, possum yeah, yeah, out of yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to buy bell peppers right now, and a guy's got a fucking possum. Yeah. Well, I went up to the... This is the craziest conversation. Because in L.A., in those stores, I'm sure they've seen just about everything. I, we just have to stop with some of the fucking tolerance. Shit. Yes. All like, of it. I don't, I don't have to be tolerant of a dude with a fucking possum. There's Zero sh- percent. There should be one animal inside of a fucking grocery Dog. store around food. Service Dogs, animal. cats, anything. Yeah. Anything in the fucking grocery store. Not near produce section. Anything near open food or anything like that. If you're blind and you need a dog, I'm Yes, a, 100%. I got you. Yes. I got you. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yeah, 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 yeah. So I go to the manager. I go, hey, do you let possums in your store and he looked at me like i was the stupidest person in the world he was like what i said possums are you allowed to bring possums in the store he goes who has a possum 
I said, the fucking guy in the produce section, he's got a possum and a baby Bjorn. He goes, in my store? And I go, yeah. But he thinks it's okay. He was like, well, he's wrong. I was like, fucking go tell him. So <laughs> <laughs> we walk back, and I go, hey, man, I told you I'd be right back. This dude's got something to say to you. Uh, I'll wait right here. <laughs> and uh, the guy was like, sir, watch. you can't have a possum <laughs> in a grocery in store. In a grocery store. And the guy said straight up, why? The possum's cleaner than you. And the manager was like, oh. I don't think so. And he goes, this, this possum is cleaner than any person in here. And the guy was like, well, then you should go have lunch with your possum. Yeah. But your possum can't be in Trader Joe's. And the guy was like, you're going you're gonna to hear from my lawyer. And I was thinking, hey, oh, listen. whoa, oh, that's where he boy. went? Listen, that dude doesn't have a lawyer. Listen, possum Jesus. You're not, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, what you, <laughs> and, 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 yeah, what, what is the suit of that? Yeah. You know? <laughs> Freaking <laughs> Stefan versus Trader Joe's. Yeah, my, my <laughs> possum. My possum felt violated. Dude. My possum has rights. Yeah. We have to draw a line. I'm, we're, I'm all for, look, if you come back from the war and you need a service animal, if you have serious PTSD and you need a dog, I get that. If yeah. that dog helps you calm down on a plane or whatever, I get that. But the animals that people are trying to sneak through as service animals, the That's, peacock, stupid. the ferret, there was a fucking person who tried to bring a squirrel on a plane. Yeah. Squirrel, chicken, peacock, ferret. Like, yep. it's been... A duck. None of those animals are soothing to anyone. No. No. A squirrel is the least soothing animal. First of all, I fucking hate squirrels. I fucking hate them. That's your worst animal? I, not my worst, but they are rats that live in trees. I fu And I used to have, there was an almond tree out here's in front the, of this house. Here's the rule. <laughs> that I lived at here in the valley. And when I used to walk to my car, there was a squirrel that used to sit in the tree and throw Almonds at me. If that squirrel lived for about 30 minutes. Your animal. <laughs> <laughs> Did you pick it off? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. You're not throwing almonds at me in my not, back not front yard. Today. No. <laughs> not we just today. We just go with the policy of this. If you can't teach the animal to sit and be quiet and stay, leave it out of fucking public. Yeah. I, I See, I'm with that. Like, So when people say, I have a pet fish. No, you don't. You have a fish. That yeah. exists. You have a fish that lives in your house. That exists. That it's is, not a glass case. That's don't tell it. me you have a pet lizard. You have a lizard that lives in your house. You, don't tell me you have a pet snake. The you, lizard people, that's my, so that's my biggest pet peeve. The lizard? Yeah. Yeah, what's the, the fucking? The lizard or the snake where it's just like, because there's always one girl who's got it too. Yeah. And then can't understand why she's still fucking single. And you're like, it's because you have a goddamn or a, or a bird. Gila monster. You yeah. were talking. That's, that's, yeah. And it's not like one of those animals that you can just. You know, stroke while you're watching a game or, you know, like have a relaxing walk with. How do you define a pet? That's that's how, that we should. I think the pet has to be able to show affection to you. Do or you agree gratitude, with that? Yeah. Gratitude. For gratitude. You're sure. giving it food and things like that. And does, it's the like, pet, hey, does the I'm pet have to know its name? Is that important? Yeah. I yeah, think so. Yep, I yep. think so. A reptile. I, I don't think you could. And, and there's they not have one no reptile feeling. I can name. No. That's like, hey. And really, this, what this is, this is a good. You're pulling pet. it out to sit it on your shoulder and show some people who obviously will be disgusted and just be like, eh, "Cool, yeah, Put that thing away." Put it back in I that cage. Yeah. Yeah. To turn the sun lamp on. Yeah, because it's got to be 80, 88 yeah. in there for the fucking thing to live. Yo, a snake. No. Yeah. Nope. No reason. None. 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 Because you're dealing with an animal that if it here's the thing that I go back to, if you're dealing with an animal that the only reason it doesn't kill you is because it's not big enough. That's yeah, it. that's because it. Because if the snake was big enough and it was hungry, it would attack you. Yeah. It has no... The reason it doesn't attack you is because it's it knows favor. it can't yeah. hit you. Yeah. It can't kill you. I mean, it is fun to watch it eat other things. It but is. That's, that's about a week that, of my attention. I, yeah, I can yeah. do that online. I, yeah. YouTube has a lot. You yeah. know but I mean? then you've got to buy the shit for the snake to yeah. eat. So it's like, all right, great. Dude, then you're, you're rat shopping. Because I've seen those fucking people yep. at, at, a, at a gut, like, you know, when you're buying, you're picking up something for your dog or whatever, and you see those fucking people just picking out live mice. Do you know they're what like, else? They're real picky about it. Like, oh, I want that one. Yeah, I want the choke. You know what else? Okay. This is what I learned also because my son wanted a snake once. You, a lot of the domesticated snakes that you buy in the store, they tell you that you have to kill the mouse first before you put it in Boo. because it's domesticated, so it's not used to be in the wild. So if the mouse does scratch it, the snake will never eat again. So you have to kill it. You put it in a paper bag, you kill it, and then you drop it right in while it's warm, the snake will eat it. That's no what somebody at the pet way. store told me. And I was like, get the fuck 
out of here. And I said, how do you kill the mouse? And she she looked like somebody who had been on the road with the Almond Brothers for like 30 years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So she put this mouse in a paper bag, looked at me dead in the eye, eye contact the whole time. And she said, just like this, bap. And I was like, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Did, wait, was there a mouse in the booth? Yes. So she killed it in yes. front of you. Yes. Did she, did she give it to you? In me and my son. Did she give it to you and no, say, hey? No, she was like, that's how you do it. And she threw the mouse away. I was like, so like, you, you, yeah, you make eye contact when you fuck, for sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which that, yeah. I'm into. Yeah. Congratulations. <laughs> and if she looks like she was at the Almond Brothers show, yeah. beaches are at a yeah. premium for her. What did your son do, and how old was he? Okay, so... Yeah. When when he was in preschool, uh-huh. he said to me, I said to him, hey, man, when you leave preschool, you are allowed to get a gift that costs $25, up to $25. Right. And he was like, anything? I go, yeah, anything. So I, I'm thinking he's going to, you know, whatever, baseball bat or whatever. So he was like, yeah, how about a snake? And I go, yeah, you can't get a snake for $25. Apparently. You yeah, can. can. You yeah. can, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but still, you're yeah. like, damn it. So we, no, we, we don't need a snake. <laughs> so we went, we went, and when we were talking to this lady, yo, she, eye contact just thwap, and I was like, fuck, I don't know. I, so, is it weird that I kind of admire her? I did too. Because I knew, I'm not, I was, when she was doing that, I was like, I don't know if I got that in me. Yeah. I don't know if yeah. I got that in me. Just to put it in the bag and be like, later for you. Sabap! Well, I mean, that one, she just tossed it in the trash. I like, know! I'm just showing you how to kill one. <laughs> but you I didn't need this one. You're <laughs> There's probably a whole tank <laughs> full of... Like, why did she just walk back and say, hey, why don't you get to eat? Yeah, crazy. I mean, because I go, I go real deep on something like this. Minimum wage job, yeah. right? Min- what w- w- times you go into that store that day? Probably two in the afternoon. Two in the afternoon? She's bashing rats right in front of children, right on the fucking, re- right eye near the contact. register. Eye contact. Imagine what she goes home and does at night. I mean, the, the first thing she does, probably take out a dull butter knife while she's masturbating, jams yeah. it right into her fucking thigh. And I bet you there's 18 other marks there, like, yeah, it's like that agree. Amy Adams show yeah. on fucking HBO yeah. where she's all scarred up. Like, yeah. That's she also fucks herself with produce for sure. Oh, you have to. She's a zucchini, just, summer yeah, squash. Yeah, yeah, just puts yeah. her head in one of those grip vices. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Gives it one quick squeeze. Double she's puddles like, all ready. the time. Yeah. She's all, she's double, double puddle. puddling all over the fucking. God ah, yeah. damn it, man. Yeah, that was that was That's l- intense. It's intense. It's intense, man. And you know, like um Because I have kids and I don't know what my reaction would be, to be honest with you. Like, I, what do you what'd you tell your son? I he was like, Was there a mouse in there? I go, no. Uh, that was like a magic trick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know. But we, we went to some magic once. So how many kids do you have? Two. How old are they? Uh, five and six months. Okay. You don't have kids. No, he's Two. got three. How old are your kids? 14, five, and three. Yeah. 14, five, and what happened in the nine-year period there? Uh, uh, divorce. Yeah. Got it, got it, got it. Yeah, yeah, got it, got it, got it. So I, we're leaving a party, kids' party. My kids were a lot younger, right? And there was magic at the magic. At the yeah. Party. So my clown or magician? Magician. Because there's a difference. Magician. All right. Whoa. All right. Whoa. All right. All right. All right. So we're my my oldest son was probably seven at the time. The dude who's in the army. Yeah, right yeah. Now. You've got the kid in the yeah. army. And uh, he just came back from a second tour. He just came back. Um, That's awesome. A week ago. Um, so he's in the backseat. Just like, did you see the, Dad, did you see the quarter? He pulled out of his ear, and then it made it bigger, and then it made it bigger. And my daughter was probably five or six at the time, and she was just looking out the window on the other side of the car, just shaking her head just slowly. And he was, I was looking at him in the rear view, and uh, he was like, can you believe? And then he was going over these, all these things, and my daughter just, I look at her, and she catches my eye in the rear view, and she goes, tell him. Tell him or I will. And I Whoa. go, I go, what do you mean? At five? She was probably six. Yeah. She goes, tell him or I will. And I go, tell him what? She goes, tell him the truth about magic. And I was like, what the fuck is about to happen? So my, my son was like, what, what's, she, what's she talking about? The magic? And we get all this. this. And, and um, she goes, tell him or I will. And I was like, hey, buddy, that's, it's not really magic. It's like a trick. And I could just see a piece of his childhood fly out the window. Oh, you, know what, you know what I mean? No. Like, it was like telling him Santa Claus yeah. wasn't real. He was like, what? And I go, yeah. <laughs> It's like a trick. It's not real magic, but it's like a 
It's like an illusion. It's it's like you think you see something, but you don't. Yeah. And he goes, he looks out the window and he goes, there's a long pause. And I hear him go, well, that sucks. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, yeah, yeah. Like, get used to those. It's kind of life. They're going to start piling up on you. <laughs> yeah. That sucks is just going to yeah, keep piling up. Yeah, that sucks is going to be a common thing you say throughout your lifetime. Over Save and it. over yes. and over again. Save yeah, it copy paste that one. It's a, it's a weird sucks. thing like, yeah, yeah, with, yeah. with kids because you, you, you have like six, right? It's three kids. You know, I thought you had a ton, like some. I have crazy three kids, amount. but I have four grandkids. Okay, all right. My oldest You're son is super young. My my oldest son has four. You, I met a woman. She had two kids. We had a kid together. I kicked her Got out, it. but I kept all three kids. I kept her two kids, and I kept my kid. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Okay. Yeah, that's yeah. impressive. Yeah. yeah. So, so the two oldest ones aren't mine biologically, but I've been with him forever. Okay. And so, and he's got four kids, all boys. Gotcha. Wow. All under the age of six. You don't look young, and I mean, you don't look old enough to have grandkids. That's why I say that. So, dude. He called me and he was like, hey, we're having a baby. And I was like, okay. And he goes, you get to pick out your grandpa name. And I was like, well, there's no fucking way anyone's calling me grandpa because I'll ignore that kid. Yeah. Like, I, I will flat out just pretend <laughs> like I don't know who that little motherfucker is. Yeah, 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 you know? yeah, 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 yeah. I'm flat out like, no, nah, I don't even know who you are. Stop. Don't talk to me. Right? So he said the same thing to me and my wife. <laughs> So my wife picks out BB because her name's Bethany. She didn't want it. My grandmother's name, my my great grandfather's name, grandmother's name was BB. She goes, I'm going with BB. And I go, okay. So we call my son the next day. He goes, What'd you go with? I said, Bethany went with BB. And he goes, What are you going with? I said, LeBron. <laughs> and he goes, What? <laughs> I said, How great would it be? Like if you say, if a kid goes, I'm going to BB in LeBron's house, you're like, Don't you want to fucking that sounds like, <laughs> yeah. like, don't you want to go to BB and LeBron's house? Yeah. Yeah, it sounds yep. like a 70s yep. sitcom where you're like, yeah. bam, 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 BB and LeBron. You know what I mean? So yeah. Yeah. it sounds like a great time. And he says to me, he goes, you can't be called LeBron. I go, man, how great would it be if we were at a park? And these kids are like, LeBron, LeBron. And everyone's like, get the fuck. Really? Yeah. You know, I, I because I get to disappoint people repeatedly. Forever. <laughs> forever. Nobody's naming their kid LeBron. No, Or forever. you're just an asshole parent. Yes. So it's like I, naming your kid Shaq. Yes. I, 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 there was a kid as a it. youth that I played baseball with, and it was on this traveling team, so it was really fucking good. Yeah. Um, never forget it, because the coach has got to call out your name, you know, to get you going yeah. or whatever. And he was like... Michael, Michael Jordan, mm. Michael Jordan, but it was right after Michael Jordan blew up. Like, you know, like and everybody's like parents didn't get know the nothing. Fuck out of here. The motherfucker was stuck with Michael Jordan, That's a white tough. kid. Yeah, no tough. The rest of his life. LeBron, you're an asshole parent if you name your kid LeBron. 100%. After, I mean, there's no way. There's no way cuz you can't live up to that. It's like no. my my buddy who's a uh he's a uh He's created a bunch of shows here. My name is Earl. Uh, uh, Raising Hope. Yes, dear. Oh, Garcia. Garcia. Great. Yes. Good. Great guy. But he was went after, before his first kid was born. He was like, I'm going to name him Doctor. I go, that's a bad move. <laughs> and he goes, how funny would that be for him to be Doctor Garcia? I go, yeah, unless he's a janitor, dude, because then yep. <laughs> that's going to be a rough life for him. He goes, oh. yeah. And I go, plus that joke only works for you for like a month, and then he's got you got to call him Doctor for the rest of his life. Yeah, yeah. And he was like, yeah, that's a good, <laughs> that's, a good <laughs> that's a good point. So my my one of my neighbors, like you know, you go to the neighborhood party or whatever, and yeah. I kind of knew uh, to the area. You don't really know all the parents that well and, and everything else. Uh, the kid's name was Legend. No. Ugh. Nope. And he was wow. he was four years old, right? Dick. The fucking kid's a dick, right? Well, already, if you call him legend your whole life? And a total pussy. So it was like kids were pushing this kid down or whatever, and I was like, man, you don't go with legend unless you have that kid out in the wilderness, like, you know, raised by fucking bears or gotta something. Got to be able to fight if your name's legend. Yeah. Because otherwise, because use somebody, a chainsaw by seven. A hundred percent. Yes. Yeah. You got to be a marksman by eight. Yeah. And truth of the matter is, you got to be able to take a grown man down by the time you're 12. Easily. Because you have to be. If you're a Easily. legend, yes. that's legendary shit. That's too much. Yeah. But so don't put that shit on your kids. No. Uh, I get a question for you. Since, since you're a dad, you know that, that whole life. Yeah. What, what age do you stop showering with your kids? Do you know that cutoff point yet? Y yeah. Well, my or, kids are or did you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, well, so not yet. Now you're yeah. like 27. Yeah, 27. So I would say <laughs> right around 21 when they're legal. Yeah. No, uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's when you should really stop. Use it. Um, honestly, for me, like it was young because then I put them in a bath. Right. And I put them, in, or if they wanted to shower, I would be there with them, but sure. I would be clothed. 
So probably for me, it was like five or six. Okay, cool, cool. Because I haven't. We're just reaching the cusp yeah. of that. Where my son just turned five, like right, like an hour ago. So That's it's it. kind of. And you're like, hey, because he's like, hey, let's take a shower, and I'm like. Man, are we? To me, it's especially after that. that Michael Jackson doc, yeah. I'm like, man, are we? I don't want you to live with that image either. It's not only that, man. He's gonna go to school. Yeah. And if it comes out, he thinks it's totally normal. Yeah. Right. Right. Exactly. And then what if a teacher gets a whiff of it? I'm showering my dad today. What? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Say that again. Uh, <laughs> oh God. I never. I never have. I just. They. They just take a shower. Oh, oh! When they were younger, when you were young, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh. You're, like, especially when, when you have two kids that are young, yeah, and, and like, because this is this is our problem, like, what, you know, newborn and all that other shit. Kids running around all day, and it's just it's out of convenience and time, hundred percent. Where you're just like, hey, we both got to shower two different kids. Let's yeah. just get this over with. Like, also, it's fine. for some kids, that first couple showers are you're a little nervous. You, you've been taking a bath your whole life. You've never done that by yourself. Right, 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 right. So for me, I know for my oldest son, the first one was just to be, he was like, I don't know what happens in a shower. I'm like, I'll get in there with you, dude. It's just water. Right, right, right. Do you know right. what I mean? But yeah. like, <laughs> it's a, you know what I mean? At that age, everything's new. And he's like, it's coming from the ceiling? I'm like, kind of. Kind of? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Uh, yeah. Uh, but, um, I mean, Kevin Costner's kid probably takes shade under his giant dick. Has to. <laughs> Has to. <laughs> That's like, that's I like, need to stay dry. Get under my la- dick. He's got son. the latest Harry Potter. <laughs> one hand up, <laughs> bathing underneath an elephant trunk. You know, it's just like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he doesn't have a hairy taint, by the way. Kevin no. I, I, would you see him in Prince of Thieves? He's hairy, man. Not hairy taint. Yeah. Everybody does. You're the only one. No. You're the only I special hero. hero. I You're the only special person hero. in this world. I refuse to believe I'm the only person. I would be happy if I was, but I'm going to probably, we're going to have to take some sort of internet poll on that. Yeah, yeah, we will. We will. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I gotta, okay, if we took an internet poll with your yeah. with your listeners, what percentage do you think would say they had a hairy tank? 98. 96, 98. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Oh, we have to do it. Wait, oh. wait, we'll, I, do it. Well, I, I, we'll do it. I, I'm going lower. Now, I didn't know it was, right now it's at 75%. Right. Right? And I'm in AIDS. Yeah. Oh, easily. He, you think he's got a hairy tank? I, I bet you it is. He's cutting through the jungle, like, you know, River of the Nile style. Like, uh, like it's like a Michael Douglas. I am, I am blown. Like, th- I have learned so much today. Oh. But I'm blown away by the, I thought <laughs> the hairy taint person had an extra chromosome. Like, nope. I thought that was. No. Because I, look, I have. Yeah, you're hairless. Hairless all, all, all the way around. You don't shave boom. your arms? No. Nothing. I don't shave anything. Uh, it's, it's, it, again, semi taint. Yeah. Like that's it. I'll get. It's a brooch. What, what do you do with like with a mirror? And, uh, well, look. There's there's certain places you can go. They'll yeah, shave it go. for you. But um, yeah. no, you don't. Every you Sunday, don't do it with a mirror. Sunday, it's a Sunday deal. Yeah. Where where, where you kind of lift up? Where who shaves? You know it for what you? a brunch is. Obviously, women go to brunch. Yeah. Uh, men can get a Sunday brooch where you know stirrups. You can kick your legs back. Boom. They'll straight raise you. And a midget gets in there. And he'll put his elbow underneath your ball so he can really, really dig up in there. That can't be and real. Then, no, sorry. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, well, because the, all, the hairy taint, I didn't think it was real. But now I'm like, this it all is. has to be no, maybe yeah, yeah, real. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's totally real. Wow. Uh, one, one question I'm dying to ask you, yeah. by the way. You have a, like a super famous cousin. Scott right? Wolf, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Is that hard that he was like a fucking teen heartthrob forever? Pussy dripping off that guy, and you're just like, God you know damn what? it. He's such a good guy. He really, like, if he wasn't such a good guy, yeah. There may, but I was always so happy for him, and he's, uh, he's such a generous dude. The reason it was tougher for me at the time is because all my brothers were going out and having a good time. I was single raising three kids. So during the party of five years, they were out fucking living it up. Uh, my brothers and my cousins and Scott, and I was this dude at home with three <laughs> young kids in a f- apartment in Hollywood where the living room was the kitchen was the dining room. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it was just like, uh, that's when I started smoking weed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, because I, I needed something for me. And I was like, it was between drinking and smoking. And I was like, well, I can't be shit faced with single dad. All the dad. time with kids, yeah. Can't yeah. be shit faced single dad. Yeah. Because it's just not functional. No. But I can be kind of high and be in the apartment and they can be asleep and I can feel like 
I still have it. Here. Sure, sure. Do you sure. know what I mean? We, yeah, like like if a fire broke out, you definitely get, wake up. Whereas if you were blacked out, done. Yeah, gone. Done. Done. He done. almost burned down his house with a DiGiorno's pizza the other day. Yeah. Um, yeah. You put it in the oven, and went to sleep. Yep. Yep. Put it in, went to sleep, and didn't wake up until what? Did your alarm go off? No. No. Smoke everywhere. Smoke everywhere. Yeah. 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 Uh, so that shit happens. So when you say shit like that, yeah, I respect it because that's true. That like you, you could burn down your fucking house and and that's it. He almost did it. Yeah, and you know what? I think it's unreasonable. Like, I hate how much people, are, people are so judgy right now. They're so judgy. Well, it's misplaced judgment too. It really, it, it's, they it's want well, to they, judge what they you. Don't, yeah. What they don't realize is like, you. Okay, this decision was made in 1921 that one was okay and one wasn't. Yeah. And then one went away for a little while, and then we said it's okay again. Yeah. And then we went on this massive propaganda campaign within the United States to indoctrinate you into thinking that yeah. this was fucking evil, and it led to all this stuff. And we were talking about it earlier. Like, when you're a kid and you see all these ads and these campaigns of, you know, when someone offers you drugs, say no. And it's yeah. like, hey, as an adult, for, for fucking 17 years, no fucking other adult has come up and been like, hey, you want some drugs? Yeah. yeah. Ever. Like, <laughs> yeah. ever. Where the fuck is that? And, and not only that, you know, the truth of the matter is, and because I'm way more of a weed guy than I am a drinker now, just because of my schedule. Look, if I drank as much as I smoked, I would not be a functional person. No, I no. wouldn't be, a, I, I'd miss flights. I, but, I, but I'm surprised on those flights because you travel a lot too. Yeah, like, yeah. are you in first or are you in coach? Uh, depends. I, I, I won't. I generally, I'm not a shishi guy. Like, if, sure. if they want to upgrade me because I fly, but the seat in the back is fucking fine. For okay, me. cool. You know what I mean? I'm not a. Because that, that's one of those things where if they're feeding you drinks too, you're like, yeah. Yeah, like in first, you almost feel obligated. Yes. Like you're wasting it. Yes. Like, I, I need three drinks, like, just because they're there. Because they're free. Everybody else is yeah. drinking, and you're like, oh, fuck it. It's yeah. fine. So I always wondered, oh, hey, cool. I was up there with, uh, okay, I was flying back from New Mexico. And uh, Ben Kingsley was in first. Oh, I was gonna say I thought you were gonna say Ben Affleck for a second. Ben, <laughs> so Ben, so I I come on. I have my guitar with me, and it's a regional jet, and so the closet is too small, and I the overhead bins in first class are full, and I'm like, and it's a soft case, and the airlines have broken my guitars before, and when I call for a claim, you know what they say? How do we know it wasn't broken when you checked it in? Right. God. It's such a dick fucking move. Yeah. So I have my soft case and I'm like, oh shit, and, I, and it won't fit. And and then I hear this and I do terrible accents. I have a black leather satchel. Give it to me. I'll put it between my legs. And I was like, and I looked down. And it was fucking Ben Kingsley. No way. And I take the thing out and I just said this in full sentence. I said, <laughs> thank you, Ben Kingsley. It seems like he seems like a first and last name. Yes. Kind of do. Well, Don't you think so? It's actually three. It's sir. Sir. Oh, I didn't give him a sir. Maybe that's why. But he did say cheers. But as oh. soon as he took the sat to satchel out, everybody else in first class was like, well, fuck it if Ben Kingsley's making room. And they <laughs> all made room so I could fit my fucking guitar in there. And I was like, I, I was sitting right behind Ben Kingsley and I said again, thank you, Ben Kingsley. Yeah. <laughs> and he said, cheers. Yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. It was great. It was fucking great, man. I, I have one Ben Kingsley story that, that really pissed me off. You remember the High Time Awards? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I was I got nominated one year, right? And I, I was up uh, for, for this movie I was in. I was up against Ben, ben Kingsley. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you're on stage. They do the whole fucking thing. You have the green carpet. Uh, I think Franco and, and those guys were there for Super Bad. Right. Um, and they won, like, Movie of the Year and all that shit. And I was like, I remember looking through the category, and I was like, I'm going to win this. I'm going to win this award because I'm up against Ben Kingsley and they know he's not coming here to accept that award. Like, yeah, he's not flying out. For and this you showed thing. up for it. I did. Yeah. Did the whole shit and yeah. everything. And they give you this bong as an award <laughs> that you can actually smoke out of. And so Anna Ferris won it. It was at her house on her fucking mantle. She was like, oh, yeah, but we smoke out of this fucking thing all the time. And I'm like, can't wait to win it. I'm up for one. It's going to be amazing. I'm up against Ben Kingsley. He's not going to this goddamn thing. Yeah. And the winner is... Did he show up? Sir Ben Kingsley. Mm. No, he didn't fucking show up. That. Yep. And, the, and then I watched them just carry... You know my, he doesn't my have that. prestigious award. He no, threw it away. They didn't ship, they didn't no. ship it to Ben no. Kingsley. I will tell you, by the way, I recently got my favorite bong of all time. I got it in December. You know, I'm Jewish. I got a menorah bong. Oh. And, and so it has eight bowls on it. Yeah. And and you have to pack all of the bowls <laughs> and you light them all at once and then you just take a hit and you lift one and it pulls off of all eight carbs. It oh. one hit off of the menorah bong 
Fuck it. your life. I, I, have to try this. I would have brought it with me. To, how long are you here? We're here until Friday. Yeah, we're here till Friday. Yeah, you, you can bring I'm that. I'm going out to my... I will pick it up today. <laughs> and I will... I, you, fuck it. I mean, you know the weed stores here are oh, plentiful. Pr- it's crazy. It's plentiful. crazy how... Like, we, we went yesterday, right? Yeah. They're giving, like, vape pens for just single uses yeah. now. Like, hey, throw it away. Yeah. You don't even fucking... like. Eh, eight days. You don't. You don't need it anymore. After just another, buy another one for ten bucks. It's almost become like a fucking cigarette. A hundred percent. And let me ask you, because you guys are both drinkers, also, right? Yeah. And so, because you don't drink at all, I don't anymore, just yeah. because it, it, it just fucks me up. Yeah. It just, I, honestly, the truth of the matter hurts is, your body. hurts my body, and it's the only time I make bad life decisions because I'm not a dude who can just have one. Ooh, that's me, by the way. Yeah, I, I but, can't just but do that. You found a fact this morning. Tell me about that. Which one? The drunk purchases. Oh, account <laughs> eight billion dollars Amer- Americans <laughs> spent last year on drunk purchases at night. That makes eight, total sense. Eight, eight, <laughs> same here. <laughs> same here. Eight billion. It makes total <laughs> sense. You add Ambien in there, some Ambien oh, purchases, oh, dude. Dude, bro, throw throw, throw in some Xanax on top of that. Like, congratulations. Dude. So, drunk purchase. Because uh, it's you what's know, your best drunk purchase? You have I'm, 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 uh, I'll tell I'm, you my best Ambien weed purchase too. Okay, All right. mine. So my my wife wakes me up. It's maybe four days later after I'd made this drunk purchase or whatever, right? And she comes in just super unhappy. And she goes, did you order a signed O.J. Simpson jersey? <laughs> off of eBay. Off of eBay. And I said, yes. Here's the, here's the worst part about it. I had ordered it because had he one. had one. I had he one. had one. Did you order yours drunk? No. no. You I, was sober? sober. And I liked his so much that I was like, fuck. I want this thing if this ever pops up. So I'm hammered up apparently, I'm, and I was going through, and I'm trying to find the jersey that he had. And one pops up on eBay. How much? Buy it now. I, I think it was two eighty five. Two eighty five. What's your so, worst drunk purchase? You I don't one? know. What is it, Dave? Because I just buy. I buy a lot of weird shit. I'll tell oh, you. Yeah, what, yeah, yeah, I'll yeah. tell you what. My, mine yeah, was yeah, Ambien yeah. and weed combo. Yeah. And so all there's a knock on the door once. He shows up, and this dude has this huge thing on a dolly. And I go, what is that? He goes, I don't, this is for Josh Wolf." And I was like, great. I thought it was a gift. <laughs> I'm like, great? It was a custom Harley Davidson refrigerator. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so there was a site where you could dress up your refrigerator. I'm like, Oh, get a fucking Harley refrigerator, I guess. I was fucking whacked out. So there, it was just, you know, it has the wrap over it with yeah, all yeah, the, yeah. the fucking total wrapped up Harley refrigerator. And so the guy drops it off. I'm like, what is this? And I opened it. And as soon as I opened it, I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think I ordered that. God My wife was it. like, what the fuck is that? I'm like, we're going to put it in the, uh, she was like, nowhere. We're not putting it anywhere. That's yeah. a Harley Davidson refrigerator. That is, that is that is a masterpiece. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was like, can we at least put it in the garage? She was like, no. Send it back. I'm like, I ordered I I ordered it from a custom place. Yeah. You can't. <laughs> you can't. <laughs> it's got our initials it's yeah. with us. Yeah. <laughs> this is staying with us forever. Yeah, like I can't even white elephant this, I think. You know what I mean? No. What am I gonna bring it to <laughs> Just kind of push it off. Yeah, hey. hey, who likes this? It's all <laughs> the whole right side is a wedding photo yeah. of that. <laughs> now I'm not gonna be able to give this one away, I don't think. Yeah, no, we gave we we brought it to the Goodwill. Oh god. Oh, you That's got rid a of great it. Great one. My wife she was not there was no there was no scenario where she was letting me keep there was zero I gave up a couple different what if, what if, and she was like I've got it. No. I figured it out because I routinely get fucking drunk and I call one of our artists and tell him to make things for me. Yeah. Yeah. So I had him do a poster of Ron Jeremy as Tron with the motorcycle and it just says Tron Jeremy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm laughing at this That's idea. amazing. That's I'm amazing. I'm show you. I That's right fucking here. amazing. Tron Jeremy. Tron Jeremy is next level. <laughs> oh, Have you man. seen that picture? Get out of here. I haven't seen Tron Jeremy. <laughs> I just, like, that is. So I get this like three days why later. Why is and I'm there like, a dick hey, on his Jay, suit? What the fuck is this? <laughs> and that's the, that's the conversation. What the fuck is this, dude? Why is 
<laughs> and he's like, bro, you messaged me at yeah. 2.30 2 in the morning. You said you needed this ASAP. No way. Have you posted that? No. Why not? I completely forgot about Tron it. Je- how could you forget about Tron Jeremy? <laughs> post That's that immediately. The best That's thing the greatest I've ever thing I've ever seen. seen. Oh my God. <laughs> Tron well, Jeremy is what? Dickless Cage. That should be, by the way, Dickless Cage. No, 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 oh, I got it for you. Pickless Cage. I mean, listen, man, this is like your hidden talent. <laughs> this, I don't know why, like, you aren't. This should be. You should be making T-shirts. Pickless Cage. Tron Jeremy. How are you not? Like that is like. <laughs> that's like a weird talent that not a lot of people have, man. <laughs> <laughs> Pickleless King Sean Jeremy though Is oh my favorite my of all god. time we, yeah. Oh my god dude That's some good <laughs> shit man <laughs> You should be making t-shirts Immediately <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Immediately. Tron Jeremy, Tron Jeremy yeah, is yeah. strong man. I texted it to him and he didn't reply I don't think he liked it Yeah because we did a movie We, we yeah. did a movie where yeah. we popped him in as a cameo And it was like a, a wink wink at the camera type yeah. thing You know and uh, He didn't reply to you huh No well, I mean, he, he often forgets. I mean, he'll talk to me for like three days, and then it'll go like six months. The and fact like, that you Jesus. still kept a rapport with Ron Jeremy is <laughs> pretty great. You never know. You do I, mean, I told you we really wanted to make him and Gary Busey in charge of our our space. Like, yeah, division. yeah, yeah, yeah. He's big Busey fan. What's I mean? What's I'm not? not what, I'm not. No. What? Nope. I will tell you. I've interviewed him once. Uh, what year? Uh, yeah. What year? What year and for how long? I interviewed him for maybe 10 minutes on a red carpet for the roast of Larry the Cable Guy. So that feels like six or seven years ago. Okay. Yeah, that sounds about yeah. right. Yeah. I will tell you that it smelled like his breath died in that motorcycle accident. It was like, <laughs> honestly, when I, he was up, we were interviewing each other. And as soon as he was like, hi. And I was like, oh, this is going to be a quick interview. Because it really, your breath smells like a camel's asshole. Like, uh, there, there is no reason that that smell should be... cleaner than you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. There's no reason. But he, he was a bizarre dude. Man. And you don't like him, be, you don't like his bizarreness? I, I worked with him, so I, I no. It, like, it's too, you can't, you can't do anything. You can't get a production can't done. Him. Can't wrangle that guy. You can't wrangle him? No. Uh, I mean, he'll, it, it's... He'll try, he, he locked a fucking wardrobe assistant inside his house in Malibu for like eight hours, you know? Um, he's gone. But, but like, why, he, he was completely sh- unpredictable. She couldn't get out of the house? Yeah, she, she, she couldn't get out of the house. And like he kept, you know, very SNL sketches of like yeah. he was in a robe, like that type of shit. And you were like, uh, but, but nothing, you know, she said nothing sexual happened. It was just he wanted a buddy, like a friend. And yeah. you were like, oh, man. Yeah, but you're not supposed to lock your friends in the house. No. That I means mean, they're no longer friends. Yeah. They're prisoners. <laughs> like, there's a definite <laughs> distinction. Yeah, you know, tomato, definite tomato. distinction between friend and prisoner, I think. Opinion, I think Josh. you yeah. <laughs> So, like, I, I know I am that being kind of prudish, I know. Yeah, yeah. I know that he's gone. Like, it was, it's a motor, you know, he was in, like, like, a motorcycle accident, mm-hmm. whatever the fuck it was. Like, yeah. Like, that's, there's no coming back anymore. So. No, his brain is, 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 changed forever. yeah 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 it's changed forever and it's 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 one of those things that where it's it's gotten sad where it, you should just go I get agree. locked away or or whatever it is like 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 the gene hackman thing right he like, just went away yes he said whatever the fuck it is he goes i'm no longer gene hackman anymore and you will never see me again until i die and that's it and i pop up and you know twitter but for about 15 minutes i respect and then that's it. that so do i I, I respect what Jack Nicholson has done. Same. He, so I, Busey. Oh, is that why Jack Nicholson has yes. completely disappeared? Yeah. yeah. He's, he's, he's said, what is dude, he have Alzheimer's I, or something? He, I mean, I think he's out of movies. I think he's having he was having a hard time remembering lines. Yeah. And same with Hackman. Yep. But I, what I respect about that generation of guys or people is that they they don't they don't need the attention all the time. They. They are okay with uh, the mystery. What I loved about old movie stars is that you didn't hear from them all the time. No. It's one of the things I like the most about DiCaprio is he still considers himself a movie star. He doesn't do a ton of interviews. No, and he's the last one because, look, after every movie, we call it DiCaprio fat. He gets DiCaprio fat after a movie. Yes. He'll, He'll get a yacht. With like a hundred prostitutes, yeah. they'll get one shot of that yacht leaving whatever dock it is, and then laughing like children of whatever. But you, and you know it's a cocaine bender for three no months. No phones. You don't see it. No phones. There's no footage. Nothing. Boom. He's but gone. But he was notorious even a long time ago 
for telling people to check their phones at the door. Yeah. You at his house. Yes. Really? And so there have been par- a lot of parties that I go to and now the, yeah. where you got to check your phone at the you door lock or, it up, or you yeah. just don't come in. And, they should, and I respect that, by the way. No, 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 Same, no, enjoy I, the moment. And yeah. by the way, since you do stand up, yeah. they should do it at every stand up show, I feel. I will tell Put you. Put it in a fucking bag, lock to, it up. And starting, Denver, yeah. the club I was just at in Denver. So there are two. Oh, which one? Comedy Works. Okay, cool. There are two clubs there one downtown, one out in the suburbs. Two of the best clubs in the country. And one of the reasons is, is because Wendy, who owns the club, locks up your phone. So everybody is paying 100% attention to you. Right. And it makes the shows that much better. There was one woman, uh, I forget where I was. Uh, but she was in front row checking her phone. And I was like, hey, you can't do that. You, this is like, it's, it's insulting to me. You're, you're in the front row of my show on your phone. She goes, well, my really good friend is really sick at the hospital. I'm like, well, not yeah, that good always, of a friend. Yeah, yeah because you're here. there, bedside yeah, yeah. with her. There's always something <laughs> not, where they yeah, try and yeah. make you feel guilty. Yeah. I'm sorry, but my mom is dying. And then like, you should go. You're at a comedy club yeah. in the front row. Exactly. Yeah. Get the fuck out. I, that's what I told her. I go, listen. If your friend is there, feel really bad. Maybe you should go be with your friend. But if you're here, you got to put that phone away. I have zero tolerance. My, my rules at my shows, I have zero tolerance for the phone. And I have even li- – if you are talking to me, I'll play with you. Sure. If you're talking to each other, you're going to last about two minutes in my show. I just – I just I don't tolerate you ruining the show for the people around you. Right. Everybody bought the ticket. Yeah. You're not the only people at the table. Whatever discussion you need to have, you should have had before or after. But if you're talking, you're gonna last two minutes. I'm yeah. gonna tell you one time. Why did you buy a ticket at yeah. that Yeah. Yeah. That's what I don't understand either. Why? I also, I also, I honestly don't understand the heckler. There, there do, there are people, and it's usually guys, who come in thinking, oh, "I'm gonna make this show better." No, you're not. No, yeah, no, you're not. I think that's booze too. Yeah, yeah. It, it booze oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. But for sure, booze for sure, booze for but sure. But same booze. in a movie theater when people are talking in a movie theater, like I need to hear your fucking commentary towards the movie that I paid for. Yeah, shut the fuck up. It, what bothers me the most about it isn't the actual talking, but when you're doing that and when you're talking in a movie theater, what that tells me is that you think you're more important than everybody else. Right. And there's nothing I hate more than that attitude when you think you're more important than me for whatever fucking reason when you think you're the only person that matters in this room and you don't give a shit about i have zero tolerance for that man really i I don't know why that's one of my biggest pet peeves yeah but yo you're in public you live in a society act accordingly or you're going to be dealt with however the fuck exactly Uh, well hey look this is a perfect segue actually Uh, we're actually going to talk about the most important person in your life uh, we do this thing called Drink a Bro of the Week at the end of the okay. show. Uh, it's it's somebody who is the most important figure or influenced you coming up as a comedian or as a father, as a human. Who 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 would you like to give Drink and Bro of the Week to? Wow, somebody important in your life. You know what? I'll, I'm gonna I'm gonna send it out to my dad for this reason, and this is just for parent for parenting. You know, um, when I was growing up, I wouldn't say I was the biggest fan of my dad because I think our generation of fathers you probably show more affection to your kids than your dad showed to you yeah and would you say you show more right it's just one of the things yes and so um he wasn't an affectionate dude and i don't think i remember really hearing him say i love you until after his dad died ah which was a big kind of turn for him sure but as i got older and to be a parent you know you start to realize that people are just different like i can't dictate to him how he was going to parent and he didn't say I love you. And I, I, a lot of times I felt like that, did, that meant like he didn't. But then as I started to be older and get to be a parent, I realized I was like, you know what, how he showed that to me? He, was, he coached every team. He, every th- he was always there. Yeah. That was the only way he knew how to show it. Is, but I can't think of an event or something that I did growing up where he wasn't there. And, and uh, when I got older, I started to really appreciate That's not you know, you have kids. That's not easy to do. Sure. You have to make that's a lot of fucking work. You have yeah. to make serious sacrifices in your and life. That's huge amounts of time. Huge. Yeah. Yeah. And you have to make serious sacrifices in your life. And the other people in your life have to know, I'm going to sacrifice this. So, and he didn't, you know, he had a hard time sometimes with jobs, but he was always, he would take time off from the job to come sit at the game, sit at the rehearsal, sit at whatever, always. And so, when I got to be a dad, um, it was one of the things that I really um, that I really respected about my dad, and I was like, it motivated me 
to not only can I now show more affection than he could, but like just the fact that you're there instills your kids with a certain quiet confidence. That backbone is always right here. Right. No matter what, like that f that net is always there. You're not out there by yourself. I always felt like, even though he wasn't vocal, I always felt like, looking back, I had that support. I could always look up and see his face. Sure. And so for me, that really influenced... Um, it, it. For me, it showed the words aren't always the most important part. What is that person doing? And that was a great lesson for me, from, from my dad, that actions, clearly. Because he could have said, I love you, I love you, I love you, and never showed up, and it would have been worse. Right. But he showed me that that what was true love that's how he showed it and so for me that was it like he really he really um he really changed i think how i would have approached parenting and just showing up for friends or for whatever showing up means a lot to people yeah right yeah absolutely. and so so i would say that that would be it i would give it to the cat my dad that's awesome man that's awesome dude this I, hey you're one of the funniest dudes on the planet well, this thanks, is one man. of our best shows uh, where can everybody find you on social media? At Josh Wolf Comedy for all that stuff. Go okay. to my YouTube page. Uh, I just hit over 500,000 subscribers. Hell Shut the yeah. fuck up. Great. Yep. What is, is it Josh Wolf? Uh, yeah, Josh Wolf. You know what I did? Remember we were talking about ownership earlier? Yeah. Monetize it? Well, I shot and produced and directed my special myself. Because I was like, what? why am I giving these people ownership to my stuff? Yeah. And I'm not getting Chappelle 42 million deal Netflix, right, right. so it's really negligible the money, and but I get control can, can, to control it. And YouTube, man, I just didn't. I know this sounds fucking stupid and old. I just didn't realize the power. Yeah, yeah. It's that the you it my comedy being on YouTube is way more effective than it being on HBO or we, Showtime or anything. I'll tell you right now, because it's, it's I, free, and yes. every TV now comes with every, YouTube. Everyone. Everyone. That's so, all my kids watch, like, fucking yeah. YouTube all day. Meeting yeah. you for the first time five, almost five years ago, I'm glad you've come You've come to uh, this world. Yeah, remember I was like, dude. Yeah, you're like, eh, <laughs> no, I just don't get it. Yeah, no, <laughs> like, dude. no, 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 come over, So come I, over. I, I, And I took the special, and I cut it up, and I just released joke by joke. And then I had one joke that was 20 minutes, and I released it in four parts. And it was about fighting my son. The whole special is called Father of the Year. And the premise of the special is every man, doesn't matter what age, at some point in their life, looks at their dad and thinks to themselves, I could, oh, take I could beat the fuck out yeah, of this guy. Yeah, yeah. I could beat the fuck <laughs> out of this guy, right? And the, so the special is basically one long story that goes in and out of it of my son challenging me to a fight and how I decide what I'm going to do and all that stuff. But... Putting it out on YouTube and doing it like that has really changed the game for me. Yeah. But so go to my YouTube channel every day. Hell yeah. Yes. yes. Also, and you've got some podcasts too. I do a podcast with Freddie Prince that. Jr. called Prince and the Wolf, uh, which is a lot of fun. You can find it on iTunes. And I do a um I do a live talk show on Facebook every Tuesday night. It is so there's I no politics allowed. I've kicked somebody off my show for talking politics. Uh-huh. Uh, it's just all ridiculous fun. It's like a cross between Pee Wee's Playhouse and At Midnight. Beautiful. I, I had a we we find weird people on Craigslist and bring them on the show. That's fucking <laughs> great. And I had this dude who thought who said he was half dinosaur, half man, and he ate salad out of my hand with his mouth. <laughs> really? What is this show called? Yo, it was one of the funniest fucking. I had two hands out like this, and dude was doing. Oh, <laughs> oh my, god. my god, it was so funny. <laughs> <laughs> but I like weird shit, man. Yeah, and I like having fun. So the show is all weird and all fun. And my son is on it with me, and I dress him up in weird costumes every show, and we never even mention it. It's like last week I had him in this weird onesie. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, man, yeah, yeah. I, check out my stuff what's man. the name of that show uh controlled chaos a controlled chaos and that's on facebook watch yeah it's on awesome. you can go to my facebook fan page and find it there too awesome awesome josh man guys thank you pleasure. very much thank for having you me. Pleasure. really appreciate it really Hell appreciate yeah. it 